Hello, hello! Guess what I'm doing here, guys? I'm doing... You know what I'm doing now? I'm literally doing a vlog! Can you believe it? It's the first vlog video for 2021! My goodness, who would ever thought that a vlog would never happen for this year? Well, it's happening now. And the funny thing of vlogs is, is that uh, I'm the sort of person who doesn't really do it a lot today. And, um, obviously I don't often show my face a lot though because, well, I'm not really the sort of person who's into um, vlogging though. But maybe I could be one of these people in the future, I believe though. I hope I can do another one of these, hopefully in the next Thursday the 21st, because you know what happens on every, on every Thursday the 21st, I often make vlogs like this. Okay, so, you know, I think making vlogs like this on every Thursday the 21st, um, it's really special for me though. I don't know how special it is, but it really is special for me, is because it's obviously, you know, it's obviously a day for me where I just start to feel like, wow, maybe I should be a little bit more, a little bit more, I would say, serious, but also be a little bit more better than before on my YouTube channel, and even my time way before I was on YouTube. <laughs> but anyways, the reason why I have the vlog here, and also, guess where I am? I'm actually in the computer room, so normally on my YouTube channel I would normally come and make videos on my bedroom though, which is uh, probably at this direction here, I think. But um, yeah, this is the first time, I can't believe it. And uh, compared to many clip-out videos, uh, I don't know how I'm actually going to perform really well on this vlog though, because I might start to have a lot of, a lot of flaws in this vlog though, because I don't know what to say here, but I'm actually going to be taking a look at some various clip-out toys that I have made way before I make this video and uh, it's going to be quite amazing you might also find a lot more jump cuts in this video because I bet you after making this video I bet this one will be very very complex I'll tell you what, making this video via this webcam just feels like I'm you know, it feels like I'm just making a video via Google Meet but I'm actually not <laughs> anyways with the trains doing a huge amount of rockets in my house though um, Let's get started, shall we? Yes. Let's do it! Yeah! Okay, the first pick-up toy I'm going to showcase here is this kangaroo toy here. Now, yes, I've already made a lot of kangaroo toys before, though, on previous videos, though, especially the big, you know, red kangaroo, which is a lot much more bigger than this one here. This one here is much more of a, a slimmer, yet semi-realistic one. I would actually think that this looks more like an adolescent kangaroo toy. Now this toy here, I've actually forgot to showcase this one here on a video where I used to record it on an S4, a Samsung Galaxy S4 phone, and I used to showcase a lot of the various creatures I've made there, like, you know, the dragons, um, the bugs I've made, like, you know, the beetles and the earwigs, the rats and the mice there. I think I've covered the rodents before though. Uh, some British wildlife creatures like you know the deer and the weasels and uh, the other creatures and blah blah and uh, I've also made like a ferret as well and all the other generic reptiles and lizards and blah blah I've also made like uh, what, it, what other creatures have I made I've also made like other Australian mammals as well though, like you know possums um, I would love to see a real possum in reality though not a possum but the Australian parsons, like, you know, the brush-tailed parsons that I often think of. Uh, but anyways, whenever you look at this model, it's like a, a much more slimmer version of the one I made in January 2020, and it looks a lot more closer to what you would actually think of a real-looking red kangaroo. It looks pretty much like an adolescent Maya red kangaroo. It's also got cheeks on his sides there, it's also got a big nose. And um, yeah, it's also got a bit of a very weird origami looking head there, which looks a okay to me there, because that's how it's supposed to be there, and um, looks really nice though. I'm sort of thinking, I wonder how this one stands there, let me just uh, put it on the table, put that right down on the table and see how it looks, and I'm just going to be very careful with the webcam there, because I'll be one minute that the webcam will take a dive away from the TV, which is of course my monitor screen. Um, yeah, I think it's alright though, standing there. I've got a train right in front of me though. And, um, yeah, it looks alright though. Looks pretty much the part. Looks very, very nice. I'd probably say this toy is good. It's a good one. I've got the Malachian flag in the background as well though. Sorry about that. 
But um, anyways, that's that. My new kangaroo toy that I've actually made like, you know, uh, is it three to four months? I don't know. But uh, it looks quite nice actually, eh? Really nice indeed. Anyways, let's move on to another toy. Here we go. Okay, next part of here without me doing a whole bunch of blasphemy and euphemism and blah blah. This part of here is of course the next one. And it's called the Flip Flap Boy Gummy, Flapping Birds, British Wildlife, Collection, Lindsay, Black Headed Girl, Vlog That Life, Dense Fish Pond, 12 Pack! Yeah, and it costs about £17.99 or £18. Now, if you don't know what a tench is, it's basically a species of fish. Normally found in freshwater areas, but let's take a look at the back here. Looks quite nice, doesn't it? It looks very cool. And, um, the artwork doesn't look too bad. Look at that. Oh my goodness, we just see guys trying to maraud that fish right in front of him. Wow, it looks actually quite nice though. I love the, the forward facing C shaped eye ring, I think though. I think that's what's called that white thing on the front though. Next to that, I would just say that dark brown headphone y thing. Very fine and burst like that. I'm just gonna unpack this. It's got the coronavirus on the top left because we're. We're making products at this time now. I'm still making that toys at those times though, which are just, you know, atrocious and, I would just say, diabolical. Yep, I'm just going to showcase these toys right now. Actually, they're models, whenever you think about that one, of course, eh? But let's take a look at the tense fish here. I think that's what you're going to call it though. I'm trying to be very careful what I'm doing here at the moment though, because, well, I need to make sure that that train doesn't collide with the wires where the webcam is. And uh, it's a very nice yellow looking fish with orange looking eyes. And it looks quite good actually though, eh? It looks really, really good. And I love the faces on these toys. Uh, it looks pretty much um, nicely detailed though. I, I'm just being very careful what I'm doing at the moment though because there's a train right in front of me though. There's a layout first. Oh, sorry. Just made contact here. There's the other side here. I'm not sure if you can see the face. You know, I'm pretty sure the camera um, can have, like, I don't know. And that train's taking over me, though. But, um, obviously, you know, whenever I think about the details of these toys, though, they look really, really nice, though. I'm trying to make sure that these guys are pretty much better in focus. Obviously, the screen can be a bit brighter than when I'm filming, especially during a sunny day, obviously, day. Well, I'll tell you what, speaking of sunny, it's actually been quite a cold week, though, in fact, and before that, it's actually been quite mild, though. We had windy weather, though. It's been quite stormy outside, though. And we had heaps of rain recently, though. But before we, I think we had a whole bunch of snow. Oops, sorry. I think I've just got my fish. Let me just do a jump cut before I can continue. Oh, yes! I think I've just retrieved one of the fishies there. I think this one's okay, but it looks like it's a bit... I don't know, it looks quite battered. It looks like it's been quite... I don't know, it looks like it's seen quite much better days though, but um, yeah. Uh, it's okay though, I suppose though, but um, yeah, it looks like it's seen... Yeah, it doesn't look really that great to me though, that detailing and design of the fishies there, but let me move on to the... Seagulls, which are of course the black headed ones, and despite their names, they actually have dark chocolate brown heads during the breeding season. But in the non breeding season, they have heads like this. Okay, so they look, they look really, really nice though. And actually, before I can actually flap these guys, I'm actually going to do something with my webcam right now. Just want to make sure that I've just covered the Sony logo on the television because obviously Sony's going to sue me if I just keep on showing their products and stuff. And um, the wings look like that. Lovely details and design. I think what could have been a lot much more better to make these um, birds a lot more realistic, I think I could have just added like a little white triangle flash. It would have been a lot more realistically better. I don't know if I'm saying it correctly there, but it would be much more better if there was a long white triangular flap on the outer part of the wing, which is where the greyish, palish, silveriness uh, tone of grey is. Oh my goodness me, I don't know if I could 
you know, say things like that though, but um, it's quite nice actually, you know? And um, actually quite very flamboyant looking birds there when they fly up in the air though. And um, whenever they see pieces of food, they are very, very feisty, like all the other gulls around this whole part of where I live. <laughs> okay, same details. And uh, if you don't actually realise, some of the eyes, some of the eyes can be little of size, but at the same time there are some eyes which are much bigger than they were supposed to be though. You might be totally wrong here because some birds might have smaller eyes than what they are supposed to have. Um, but it looks quite nice. Some detailings, and um, yes, really, really nice. I think what could have been a lot much more better to make these birds a lot more interesting is to have names, specific names, not just the species names, but also the image names. I would have called it Wilkin Black Headed Girl. But um, nevertheless, I think um, the Wilkin plumage of the Black Headed Girl is the most common one that we might find, not as much as the, um, the breeding plumage. But, um, yeah, that's quite nice, eh? Right? Anyways, that's just got it done. Oh, the next one is, of course, this the flap origami flattened birds, little swallow, plush and toy. It's a flock of uh, tufted ducks versus brackish, which one of mollusks, straw pack. And it costs about £15 or £14.99, as it says right over here, though. Slight error here. All I can see is a tree of seashells, but I think it makes sense because, well, Tuck the ducks tend to prefer mollusks, insects, and all the other pieces of prey that it loves to eat while diving underneath the water there. There's the back of the packaging here, and there's not much going around here obviously, there's just a very weird sort of uh, packaging. There's not much going on here apart from the fact that I can see a pair of ducks flying there. And I've just, I think I've got really derailed at the moment though, so just give me a second before I can continue here. Um, I'll be right back. Okay, with Luke, we rolled back onto the tracks again. Um, yes, I could literally say that the reason why there's seashells there is because tucked ducks may live beside the sea, but mainly at the estuary. So if you don't know what an estuary is, it's basically where fresh water meets salt water, particularly when a river meets the sea. Which is quite nice there. I'm just going to unpack this and see what we've got. Oh yeah. And in fact, whenever I'm showcasing products like this, I'm going to bring the webcam with me just to see what we've got. My ears itching me. And uh, Luke's running well, as you can see on the background there. But anyways, I'm just going to showcase what I have. Okay, let's move the packaging aside. And uh, yes, it looks quite nice actually there. We just move it like so. And um, take a very good look here. Here's one of the tucky ducks, they've got uh, quite nice looking plumes here, this is like female. And if I flap its wings, it looks really really nice. Okay, so it's got wings like that, which looks really really nice. It's got yellow eyes here, I think the males also have yellow eyes as well though. And in fact, tucky ducks are like one of the other common species of ducks alongside the, um, the mallards, which are very familiar looking duck species, I'm just going to turn and love off. And this one here, I think that's a male. This one obviously has got a purple head. In fact, um, whenever you think of tufted ducks, they've actually got like metallic, purplish, bluish, greenish looking heads though. Which is quite nice though. Once again, it's got the same details as the female, but instead of brown, they've got... Well, I think in reality they will have black, but of course grey. Some sort of a slightest slaty sort of darkish grey though, just to look more, I don't know, a bit unrealistic but also just to, you know, make things a bit, a lot more easy for me though. Maybe just to cheapen things up though. And you know one of the biggest things I could say here about detail is, is that whenever you think of toys and detailing, you know, whenever I put little things like that, like the yellow eyes or the greyish, bluish colour combination on the head here, that's what I would call detail. And detail in the toy aisle costs a lot of money, which is very interesting to hear though. Um, obviously the females look the same, all of them I believe though, but the males, uh, this one here's got a green head, 
hope it looks really, really nice. And I think Luke has, I think he's stuck already though, but um, looks quite nice though. Oh, sorry. My bad. I think I've just moved my arm next to a tray now, which wasn't really that bright, eh? And it uh, looks really, really nice. Okay, I might show you the, um, the components next. And what components I'm actually talking about is not just the dirty table, but also these three ram horn shells. And obviously they get their name because, well, they're in the shape of a, a horn of a ram. And if you don't know what a ram is, it's basically a male sheep. That's brilliant. But yes, these are just, you know, just a, a fish water snail shell. And if you think about it, they, it's quite multicolored. It's like a color combination of brown, yellow, red, and green. It looks pretty autumnal looking. These sort of colors here, really interesting. Very interesting pieces of detailing there on these um, snail shells. They look really, really nice. And speaking of shells, we've got those weird uh, shells that look more like light bulbs. And to me, they just look nothing like a shell, but um, yeah. Actually, whenever I think about it, it almost looks like a very weird 2D origami mushroom from Super Mario Brothers. That's so weird, man. That is so, so weird. But uh, anyways, I'm just going to re-pack them into the packaging because I don't want the packaging to go dry. Well, I'm just going to re-pack the product now and um, obviously, um, with me repacking the toys there, it's very important. Whenever I'm doing vlogs like this, I need to make sure that my face is in good contact to you guys watching here because obviously it's going to be you know, a bit very hard there. I think, obviously, the reason why I don't often make vlogs there, as I said earlier before, uh, I don't often show my face a lot there because obviously when people just, you know, speak to camera while you know, exposing their faces a lot though. It can turn people off and stuff like that though, and people can be harsh with you and, and stuff like that. But um, yeah, let's not go into that side anymore though. But uh, let me move on to another pickup product. It's this one here. It's a, oh, it's a Northern Shuffler Duck Flock versus Water Boatman Bugs Toy Pack. And it costs about £16.95. Wow, that is deadly expensive. And once again, we've got the coronavirus on the top here with a duck on the letter O. That's very really interesting. Here's the back of the packaging here. Oh my god. <laughs> that is one very deeply looking duck there. It's quite a very weird comic sort of drawing there. It's a very weird illustration here. Oh my, oh my god, that's like a female duck just quacking all along. That's very weird deeply looking eyes here. And oh my goodness. I don't know why, this duck here also looks very derpy as well though, that's very weird though. But anyways, I'm just going to unpack this and see what we've got. Just coming in and doing the unpacking, you know the one flapping bird I feel like would be very interesting to take a look at would be the lapwing. And I feel like that would be one of the most asked for of all birds I would love to think of. It's interesting, I think the one other bird I would love to have is a golden plover. That's the closest it can get to. But anyways, Let's take a look at what we have. Okay, these are like, you know, your water bugs, I suppose. So they're aquatic freshwater insects, I think. Uh, I don't know where the eyes are, but if, if you can see the eyes, I'm pretty sure these parts here are the eyes. And I like this sort of, sort of um, greyish colour though on the front. If you know where to look. Quite hard though, but. Um, yeah, obviously that's the shoveler's favourite piece of food in the water though. Uh, I think that's the eye. And that's also the eye here as well though. That's pretty much the same sort of, how you say it, same sort of design obviously though, but uh, I don't know if I could say it correctly though because some of these models are designed in a very different way. Even this one here, it's also got a couple of eyes like that. And I've got to tell you what, I'm actually very accustomed to nature and things like that. So um, yeah, looks quite nice. The water boatman, I think I've came across one of these freshwater insects before. Actually, whenever I have a look at these creatures though, they are nothing like a water boatman to me though. They just look like some sort of weird generic water beetle thing. I don't know, it doesn't look more like a water boatman. It's so weird. I think the artwork on the packaging there is um, almost quite deceiving though because obviously you know, whenever I make models like this, 
in origami form, but I should let me do. Sometimes it's not always right. But anyways, with me just looking at the computers and stuff like that, so out of the way now, because I don't want to get my screen exposed now. Let's take a look at the duckies. Oh yeah. Well okay, let's take a look at what we have. This is of course a Northern Shoveler. Yes, as we all know, Northern Shovelers are named like so because, well, they're simply called shovelers and where I live they. And if you don't know what's a shoveler, it's basically a species of duck that has a beak well adapted to shoveling right in the water just to find food or prey along the water, I'd say. It looks very nice in and under the water. It looks really, really nice. And uh, I think these ducks, whenever you see these guys, they often courtship together and just do some spinning around tactics. I don't know. I think they do some sort of weird spinning courtship display. Like, you know, they often do that, like, every autumn, winter, and spring, I believe, they. And it uh, looks quite nice, though. There's do something on the back there. Of a northern shoveler. It's interesting, I think I've made birds like this before, though. This sort of flapping duck. And, uh, all of the males, they just look the same to me. I'm not going to flap them all. But I'm just going to flap one of the female shovelers this time, because I don't want this video to take so long to be produced on my YouTube channel. And, um, yeah, it looks really, really nice. I also love this one here. It looks really nice, man. It looks really, really good. Once again, we've got the brown eyes. And we've also got a beak like so. It looks really nice. And uh, I love the orange feet as well, though. Obviously, it looks very, very nice. And it almost looks pretty much close to what you would actually find on a real shoveler duck. And uh, I've got wing detail up like so. Yeah, looks really, really nice. Oh, there's a bit of an error here. This one here has got, like... Oh, that's not a good sign, eh? I think I need to use the right way. Turn me chalky. I don't know. Um, I would just say a component. I'm just going to smush this just to get the grey going there. There you go. All fixed now. In other words, I'm just going to repack the guts now and move on to another product. Oh, the next one is, of course, a non-breeding lesser black fact girls at breeding short 12 pack, 17 pounds 95. How could you go wrong? Obviously, that's the main thing when flip that toys are sold during winter. They often have prices like that. Once again, we've got the COVID-19 symbol like that with a seagull. That looks very distorted. Oh, I thought it was pretty distorted. Actually, it looks more... That's pretty demented when you think about it there. There's the back of the packaging here. Oh my god. Oh no. Oh no. Please Nintendo, please don't sue me for this. I've just drawn a picture of Krabby from Pokemon. And I've also drawn a picture of Kingler as well though. Please don't tell me I'm, I'm just looking up your art with day. But anyways, I'm just going to unpack this and see what occurs in this product. Oh yes, I don't know if I've reviewed this product before though, but it um, looks quite nice. I need to look back before I need to make a move. Okay, with all of the major components out from this product here, which is of course the non-breeding lesser black fat girls at the uh, Feeding Shield 12 pack, which is the product I'm reviewing now. I'm going to start off with the pulchards, which is of course like a little siding like fish. And uh, the mouth looks quite a bit distorted because um, obviously I'm using a camera which isn't that HD, sadly to say. Um, here's the other one there, looks like it's seen time for the days, looks like this one here has been, um, how would you say, it looks like it's been suffered from, almost looks like someone has been suffered from oyster, obviously, okay? but um, then we've got four of these guys here, I think, and um, oh, this one's really much battered for this bit though. Uh, actually, looks a lot more. I don't know. Looks a bit smothered though. Having all that weird. I don't know. It looks so, so weird. I think it's probably it's like the combination of both the pencil leg and also the glue as well. I think it's like both the PVA glue and the pencil doing this thing just to make these models a lot more uh, smothered though. It's so so weird, eh? But um, yeah, the pilchers. I think I've covered these guys before. And, um, 
Yeah, sorry I can't even get these guys a bit more closer here, but um, let me move on to something else. But the most important feature in this set comes two crabs. There's a small one here that looks like Crabby and a Pokemon, which has got no detailing on the bottom here, but as a buoy, I just a very weird looking face with no expression into it today. But that's okay, because I'm trying to replicate it. So it's so easy though, just to make this crab a little bit like Crabby and the Pokemon. And my post got a bit funny then. Oh. I think I must have been parking all day long though, just to make this video perfectly though. Now this one here, that's a much bigger crab though, hey? It looks more like a spider crab, whenever you think about it, hey? It looks pretty nice though. I don't know if it's like the correct arrangement though. You know, ten legs equals crab. Or crustacean, whatever you want to call it though. But um, yeah, it looks very nice though. I love the orange detailing on the front though, but yeah, it looks quite good though, it doesn't look that much more of a fat though, to me it looks, it looks more like a bug though, but um, yeah, obviously those ten legs, to me they just shout out crap to me though, especially with those pincers in the front though, or claws, whenever you think about it, right? BIG MINTY CLAWS! <laughs> yeah, that's Mr. Crabs! Anyways, I'm just going to show you this one here. This is a... Ooh, I wonder what this is. Oh, it's a sub-adult. Oh my goodness, it's a wintering sub-adult lesser black bat girl. And you know, one thing about sub-adult seagulls is, is that they often have brown in the front of the beaks and brown at the back of the tails. Uh, which looks quite nice though. Now, I don't know if it's the right or wrong shade of grey though, because normally lesser black bat girls tend to have like a darkish... Yes, a darkish like it's grayish sort of colour though. And here we are, there's the adult wintering list of black bat girls. Uh, yep, they look like that. The name like so. I think I can make more of these birds though because I think in the West Midlands and where I live though, there are actually a lot more lesser black bat girls living here compared to herring girls. Because um, obviously uh, lesser black bat girls, they're actually quite a bit slimmer. But not only that, but I think these birds are a lot more easier to spread inland because, you know, there's plenty of amounts of food here to look for, which is quite nice, I have to say, eh? Also, I think um, the Skoma colony in uh, Pembrokeshire, in Wales, I'm pretty sure, I think Pembrokeshire has got a lot of these birds nesting here, and I think these guys must have been moving inland for some unknown reason. And I've actually got to correct these guys here. I think. Uh, the most notable year when seagulls moved inland was around 1956. So that's when these guys actually decided to get away from the sea to look for some food here. And you know what? Finding food inland is a lot more opportunistic rather than being on the coast. In fact, it's much better than the coast. For these guys to thrive and eat as much food as possible, even during long cold winters like we're having now. And this is a juvenile. Actually, is it a juvenile? Yes, it is. And the, oh, wait, this one here doesn't have a name. This one doesn't have a name. Oh, no. We need to go ahead and call the pencil right now. And I need to jump cut to this one right now. Get the train, get away. Actually, more like let the train get away to that section here. Okay. So I'm just going to write. Oh, I forgot to do this before I should have. Oh, uh, you know what, I think I should have done this before I should have done this video in the first place. But, um, yeah. Looks really nice indeed. I'll just make sure I just move the pencil out of the railway line, otherwise the train will derail at any time. I'm just gonna repack it, but I need to do a jump cut first. Crikey's, I don't know about you, but I think these trains have gone a bit quite slow here. Ooh.
Okay, I need to repack this product before I need to move on to another one, obviously. And I've got to tell you what, I think this video is going to get chronically long because with trains running on batteries, the video is going to get mighty long. And uh, we don't want trains getting weak batteries, don't we? No! And, um, oh no, I think Luke is too old already though. Sorry about that. I think that's just about it, eh? Okay, let's move on to our next product. The next product I'm going to take a look at some pigeons. It's a red and white pied tumbler pigeon clock in colour versions 5 pack. And I think Luke is due well, so just give me a sec before I can continue. Sorry about that one, guys. I think Luke has just taken a dive already. There's the back of the packaging here. Oh, I forgot what. Product's name here. Oh yes, it's called the Red and White Pie Tumbler Pigeon Flock and Color Variations 5 Pack from the Flip Club Origami Flavin Birds Toy Range. And it costs about £7.50, which looks really, really nice. And it's got the coronavirus in the top left, so I'm just gonna basically check it out. Okay, I'm just gonna take all we have and I'm just gonna just gonna flap the birds and what I have at the moment though. It's just a very simple looking flip flap product. Okay, this one here. Okay, this one has got pencil detailings in his wings and red. It's also got a pink beak with, with a big googly eye on the front there, even though the eyes aren't really that googly there. I've got the Malaysian flag on the right hand corner here, obviously. Uh, here's this one here. Okay, and uh, I was, I was going to be doing a twi pack, but then no, uh, because my red sharpie pencil died. No, sorry, pen died. Why do I get confused sometimes whenever I mistake a pencil for a pen? That's weird, eh? Well, pen for a pencil, that's so weird, eh? Or, or should I say, or otherwise, or the other side, or vice versa. Anyways, there's the other one there, which looks really, really good, eh? And it's got a white tail here. I'm not going to do a jump cut because, well, obviously if I did a jump cut, I'm not going to perform that well. There's the other one there. It's just a very simplistic looking putter here. And if you want to really know why these birds, why these pigeons are called tumblers, well, obviously they've got the name here. Uh, this one is a white tail tumbler pigeon. And this one is a red tail tumbler pigeon. Uh, if I show you the names correctly there, there you go, there's the name. And what's this one here? Oh wow, it's an all red winged. Tumbler pigeon. If you don't know what a tumbler pigeon is, it's basically a breeder pigeon that was bred for not just racing, but um, yeah, they're called tumbler pigeons because. Oh, look at this. There's a speech mark with a pigeon there. It says, We are called tumbler pigeons because we can roll backwards in flight. So that's why they're called tumbler pigeons. That's very, very nice. I don't know if I could just do that one. Eh? It's so weird. Eh? It's such a very weird. Very weird movement for a pigeon. Though. It's like the um, Birmingham roller, but the other way around. It's so so weird, right? Eh? And uh, I'm just gonna repack these because these birds they look pretty much simple in design, though. The pigeons, obviously, they. Eh? And um, yeah, whenever I think of pigeons and the flip-up always got me for having birds toy range. They are, of course, the national symbol of my flip-up always got me for birds toy range. Okay, let me move on to another product. Now this next one is certainly something that I did before, which you know, I think it was a 12 pack that I did before. This one here is a semi-realistic tropical Australian golden finches small flock, 5 pack, £6.95, 5 pence away, £7, and they come in 5 different facial colours. You get black, you get red, yellow, peachy, orange, and grey, which looks really nice indeed, so I'm just going to go ahead and show you what it looks like. And uh, yes, it looks really, really nice. Got the same sort of wing patterns like I did with the the 12 pack that I did in a previous video. I think it was in was it April? I think it was in April. I think. And uh, got the same tail details like that. I'm um, just making sure Luke is running nicely. This one's got like a greyish looking head. Next up here, 
and it's got a facial colour of black. And I'm trying to be very careful I'm saying here because um, maybe I just don't want to hurt any other communities from you know from different races. But um, it's a very nice looking bird though. Sure these guys look really really nice, but what's even much more better than the birds I did on the 12 pack, um, because these guys are were heavily detailed via uh, a sharpie felt tip, trying to make sure that the train stays nicely there without even taking a dive away from the table in front of me there. Um, these birds, they look really really nice. Also got a nice, um, sort of very very nice pinch of beak action here. And uh, let's look at this one here. This one's got like a, a Lego face, a yellow Lego sort of face there. It's sort of weird, eh? Whenever I think about it there. And there's the other side. And this one here has got a, uh, a peachy, orangey looking face, which is really, really nice. And I've got to tell you, well, it looks much nicer, the green and the brown together. It looks so much better. It's like if the colours were like in a, in a much better definition. Or in a better sort of tone or quality there. It, it looks so much better than the 12 pack. It looks much, much nicer, I think. Obviously. I've done these, these birds before, but these are much more nicer. And yeah, it looks quite good. In fact, I've got a conspiracy theory about green and colour day. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying here, but whenever I think of the conspiracy theory of green, that colour really brings my head back to me so I'm sort of thinking I don't, know, oh, I don't know what I'm saying here but I think whenever I think of the colour green it just relates back to what Kermit the Frog says. The next product here I've got here is some sort of classic flip flap origami flapping birds product and I've actually forgot to review this one here because you know why oh it's got a dot here but it's in the top right corner here instead of the left which is interesting it's another flip flap origami flapping birds pets item and it's called the very lower uh, I don't know what this is. Oh, it's a, a flock, five pack. It should be called a small flock, but it costs about seven pounds fifty. And the back here, oh wow, the good old days are oh, the good old memories. Numerous flip flap products used to have envelopes with windows at the back. Yes, I certainly remember these heydays though. And actually, I need to rewire Luke again though because I think Luke is stuck on that piece of crap, which is what we're here. I'm just going to switch to the other section of this railway here because I want Luke to continue running out even though his battery is starting to drain out I'm just going to unpack this and see what we've got and uh, I've actually forgot to review this product eh? because I must have left it uh, uh, somewhere that I couldn't remember there but it's quite a nice looking product here eh? lovely in fact I'm not going to suffocate with this one here let's be sure hey and um, see what we have. Oh, that's a very nice looking bird. Eh? It looks really, really tropical looking, eh? And uh, I think it's a very, very Australian looking bird here. Whenever I think about the colours of it, of course, it looks, looks pretty nice. So I think what have been, what would have been much better is, is I could have done this with felt tip sharpie pens. It would have stand out a lot more though. But I think the colours are, I think that's enough though. The, the colours are pretty much blocks though. With that glass sort of detailing out. And uh, here's the other one there. Also, I love the peach um, red details there on the front, even with the beak as well. It looks very, very nice. And also a bit of blue. Oh, sorry. I must have dropped it by accident though. Uh, but nevertheless, that's one nice looking parrot here. Uh, in fact, all of these guys are literally the same. And um, yeah, they look really, really nice. Hey? In fact, I might make more parrot toys in the, in the future. Hey, and actually, I have something in my head here. In fact, I might make like I don't know, like one to four tropical thing products here. Boy, boy, I love the sound of flapping birds. And that ray right behind it, though, looks really, really cool. Hey, my goodness, it looks really awesome. Like that, hey. And uh, I'm just going to repack this one next because um, you know why I'm going to do something. You know what? I'm actually going to be doing something next. Day. I'm actually going to take up another flip flap product, which is going to be quite amazing. The next tour here. Remember, I've talked about the flip flap um, Thomas and Friends knockoff, which I put as Tomash. 
It's like a franchise where I've crossed Thomas the Tank Engine with Ash Ketchum from the Pokemon franchise. And I've actually made one of the newest characters so far. In fact, look what we have here. Ooh, it's Boko. But unlike the Boko from the Thomas the Tank franchise, it's spelt in a very different way. Now, of course, according to many Thomas and Friends uh, people, this character here is one of the most asked for of all the other characters in the franchise. I think Duck made it back to the series. But boy, boy, uh, I gotta tell you what, whoever thought Duck returned to the series would have made people just want to demand for this character here. And you know what? I agree as well, though. I think. I wonder how long is it going to take. Yeah, I don't know what I might say here, but I think this train here looks so, so cool, eh? D5702! Alright, uh, there's the other side here. Also got British Rail. <laughs> British Rail on the other side here. Looks like the logo is a bit distorted here, but I think it looks pretty close to a Metropolitan Vickers Diesel Electric Type 2 locomotive. I think it's a Kobo. It's got the driving wheels at the front there. There's also the I don't know, are these the training wheels? It's quite a very weird wheel arrangement for this sort of locomotive. But boy, boy, I wonder how long are we going to wait for for Boko to make a reappearance in the TV show. There's the barcode on the front here. That was about to say, hey. And there's the roof detailing, which looks really, really good. And there's the back of this counter here. It looks so good. Man, I feel like I must have just nailed something here. And also, this is the first diesel train in the Thomas and Friends train series. I mean, it's a Thomas, but um, trying to be more flip-flap-ish, which looks nice. I've also made Bocol, just to give him some green eyes, just to make him a lot more different to the character from, you know, from the legitimate Thomas and Friends franchise. But um, yeah, it looks really, really nice. Very nice addition, eh? Normally I'll do steam engines, but you know what? This diesel might be the first, and it's so nice to have one. Yay! Alright, let me move on to our next flip-flap product. Um, oh, this one here. Oh, yes. Yeah. So we're moving on to more parrots now. It's a tropical Indian plum-headed parakeet small flop 5 pack, 8 pounds 95. I think that train is right in front of me there. And I think it's getting a bit slow there, because I must have been using it for a long time though. There's the back of the packaging here. Ooh, looks like these males here, looks like they're doing a very weird argumentative confrontation here, and who's going to be the best mate for that very, how would you say it, very um, inquisitive looking female there. It's got her neck stretched like that, it's very weird, eh? Uh, anyways, this product here costs about £8.95, it's a flip flap origami flapping boots pet item, I'm just going to check it out. Now, I've done a 12 pack before, though, but man, oh man, I think I've done this fly pack just to revive this product just for good and also to make this product a lot much more better than it than what I've actually done before on the 12 pack and it's also got a very different shade of green and also the what the it almost looks like it, the paint's not really that blocked a lot though the colors they're not really that blocked you know the blue and the green together it's not really blocked whenever I think about it of course though of course the Mars have got a different beet color though Okay, and uh, there's the other one there. It's got the same tower detailing as before, though. Different shade of green and different shade of blue. I don't know if it's the correct or wrong sort of colour arrangement here, but therefore it looks really, really, you know, well, I'd say it's good, though. Okay, so it looks really, really nice, though. And if I think about this sort of product here, which looks a okay, and um, yeah, once again, we've got the same detailings, you know. Red dots on each side, and um, yeah, it looks pretty much nice though, I suppose. There's nothing much to say here eh, apart from the fact that the Mars have got like a purplish, pinkish sort of magenta like head, and the females have got like a, um, a I'd just say, some sort of smoky, purpley, grayish looking head day. And in fact, there's a Hoover right on my room there, my bedroom there. And this train is actually uh, going slow though, in fact, I might turn it off. But look here, I think they'll run quite nicely, alright? Uh, I don't know which part I might go for next. This one here, I think. Ooh! Uh, this one is a flip up origami flapping birds. British Wildlife Collection toy. It's a great cormorant. Um, great cormorants, actually, because we've got the letter S. Fishing Frenzy versus 
Ooh, semi-realistic common cop show 12 pack. And it costs about £17.95. What's up with products being sold at this? Oh, that's a very weird. That is one demented looking common here. Looks like he's acting some sort of weird cretin with the wrong amount of wings in that sort of product there. It looks like this artwork here, it looks like this bird is pretty much on drugs. But what's with that? And that common here, it looks like he's very stroppy about that one, eh? And a uh, little stuff there. Eh? In fact, I'm, I'm actually going to make him go into the other section of this layout. Alright, just going to unpack this and see what we have. Oh, yes. Lovely indeed. I don't know why we've got a Hoover in the background, but I don't know if I should come back to this vlog here until I feel like I'm ready. Penis! Oh my goodness me. Uh, it disappoints me. I'm really sorry. I've just delayed this part of the video though right now because I had to do some cooling there. Uh, just to make my room a lot more cleaner though and the Uber's in the back there as I can just straight for it here though and I also have to change the battery in my train here so I think my train's running a bit low well, though and uh, yeah I think everything should be performing a bit more fine here as I'll continue reviewing this product here here we go, let's see how good or bad this product will be and um, yeah, that's about it eh and we've got some cog here, we've got some cormorants and um in fact, it looks very nice though, they've got everything now. I'm just going to show you the cog fishies first. In fact, they're quite nice to focus here. If I just wait patiently, um, the camera might focus to where the fishy is. Okay, so I'm just going to just hold it a bit gently there and just wait for the camera to focus. Sometimes the camera won't do that job perfectly there because of me. And uh, there you go. It looks really, really nice. Lovely lavish looking pieces of detail in there, so it um, looks really good though. I mean, it's not that bad, but it's certainly not approaching to what Magic Carp would look like though. Magic Carp, go, Magic Carp! We'll let this some um, fish just to um, focus. If it is going to focus. Um, is it? No, I don't think it's going to focus though. But more um, of these guys, they just remain the same sort of, you know, colorizing and blah blah. You know, this sort of brownish, ochre sort of colour there on the body, and uh, we've got a grey head and tail, of course, and the fins as well, though, obviously. I think they're more like flippers whenever I think about them, you know. And the best thing about these guys is that you can actually attach to the cormorants. I did this sort of technique before, though, in a video in September, very similar to. The other products I must have been doing off those, so it looks really, really good. And uh, it doesn't look too bad whenever I make these flip nut products, it looks so, so good. And um, yeah, it looks really, really nice there. In fact, all of the comments have all got this name. And you know what, I think it's just too much. Though. I think I've already covered the comments before because they all look the flip insane. And I've got to what, we have got about two of the products to go. And then I'm done with this with that review. And I'm hoping that I'm not going to get another delay in this tour review slash vlog. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and move on to something else. As long as I can grab, as I can grab the fish just in time. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, I'm back again vlogging. Like saying, yes. Both of the trains and the train sets have gone now. We've got Luke and that. Tokyo Metro train just gone right now because I think their batteries are starting to drain now. And um, yeah, without me being like some sort of weird cretin just vlogging on my YouTube channel, I'm gonna take a look at this one here next. And it's this one here. And of course, it is, it's you know what it is? It's a the flap origami flapping birds tropical Asian red wattle lapwing flop swipe pack. And there's a fun looking fact here on the middle of this packaging here. It says. Oh, let me try and read this one here. Oh, they're loud alarm calls. Oh, yes, they're loud alarm calls. Yes, C A L L S, calls. Sound like. Oh, did he do it? Actually, before I should continue in this video, though, let me just go ahead and just listen to the sounds of a red wattled lapwing. Let me do it. Alright, 
Let's listen to the sound of what we've got. Wow, that is a very interesting sound. Now, this sound obviously sounds like, did he do it? So, obviously, that's where the packaging fact comes from there. And, um, yeah, I did a bit of research on that one, eh? Anyways, I need to turn the train back on, and I might tell you later on. Okay, with the sun shining right next to me there, um, obviously, yes. This tropical Asian red rattled Lapwing Flop 12 pack really is quite amazing. £18.50. And here's the back of the packaging there. Wow, look at that. That's a very nice looking picture of a tropical looking Lapwing. And I gotta tell you what, I'm so glad I can get this bird to look a lot more tropical looking though, because yes, it's a real species. Yes, one thing about its call is that it sounds like, did he do it? Or pity to do it? Now, I'm actually not going to be doing the real impression of that bird, but yes, this is what that sound was meant to be. So, yes, it looks quite nice. There's some very cool looking artwork there. And I've got to tell you what, there's also another fat there on the top there. It's got the same sort of fat right there. Fun fat right over there. There you go. Oh, wow, it's got the nickname, Did He Do It Bird? So, it's basically like, you know, your much more friendly version of the mass black wing, in a sense that, you know, the spurred wing. Bloggers in Australia, I think the mass black wings in Australia, they're pretty much aggressive. But these guys here, I'm pretty sure they're a lot more passive, I would say. Anyways, I need to get these guys unpacked straight forward, I think. Let me do a jump cut. Alright, I'm just going to unpack this and see what we have. And um, it's going to be quite amazing once I start to take a look at these lap wings. There you go, there's one of them here. Like I said earlier before, lapwings are one of the most asked for bird species or one of the most asked for bird types ever though because obviously, you know, when I had a trip to Sanwell Valley though at the RSPB Bird Reserve in Sanwell Valley Country Park, it looks quite nice. And actually I've seen some, oh sorry, I thought there was a background noise right next to me there or behind me there. But um, yes, um, it's quite amazing. Actually there's a lake called Fortunal Lake and there's actually uh, an island there with some lapwings there, and if you, if you know what I'm talking about, there's um, an RSPB reserve in Sanwell where they have got like lapwings breeding and roosting together there. And I think if I remember from like the late summer to like early spring or late winter, these guys can congregate together and make some very cool looking murmurations and flocks, which is quite nice, eh? There's another one here. Okay, what's very interesting about these birds is, look at the wings. The wings look a lot more iridescent in plumage. It's got green, it's got brown, it's also got purple as well. And also the tail looks very, very nice there. Instead of black, we've got grey, but it's in the middle. And the beak looks really cool. And also look at the eyes and the wattles right in front and also between the beak and the eyes. Lovely indeed. I'm not sure if I'm going to show all the birds here because these guys they look very good looking indeed and one thing about these guys is is that they've also got yellow feet right behind can you see the feet I bet you can and um, yeah looks really nice indeed hey eh? maybe I should move the camera to where I am uh, I'm actually looking towards the screen here ah. oh here we are um, just give me a sec, I need to fix this. And last, but by no means least, are those Rhesus Monkeys. The tropical Asian Rhesus Monkey for 12 pack, £13.50. With a nice artwork of a monkey on the letter O next to the coronavirus. Nuts. Here's the back of the packaging here, you can see some monkeys doing some stuff here. It looks like a half Japanese monkey on the front and a half crab eating monkey with a pinkish butt. In fact, that's a bit cringy saying that. They are a very cringy thing to say though. Obviously there, and there's a monkey being blown by the wind of nowhere. 
And actually, whenever I think about these monkeys, though, the Oasis monkey is one species of monkey that must have been one of the most asked for species of monkeys there in my head there, because obviously, you know, it's one monkey species that has been, you know, pretty much well known for a lot of obvious reasons, like for the fact that there was that one moment there was a monkey in space. Yes, a monkey was sent in the space for some research and whatnot and stuff, but yeah, animal cruelty really does exist. Taking a monkey into space really does sound like a cool experience. Oh my goodness, what was I saying? A cool experience in reality. But if it was fictional, oh my goodness, fictional? Well, it's not. Maybe I need to go back to dyslexia school and just, just basically, um, I don't know. It feels like I'm not that great talking here. Now I need to count how many monkeys we've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Hang on. Hang on, there's actually 11 monkeys in this one here, though. That's weird. I wonder where's the 12th monkey. It must have been falling out from nowhere, eh? Let me just stop the train here, but... That's... Oh, wait, there's a monkey on the floor here. I've actually forgot it to put back onto the packaging because, well... You know why? These monkeys must have been gone bananas, obviously, they. <laughs> Now, obviously, these monkeys, as you can tell, they've got different shades of pink, and i got to tell you what, it's much easier just speaking like that with the train turned off, though. And, um, yeah, they look like some sort of weird crab-eating monkey slash Japanese monkey crossbreed, or cross-species hybrid thingy. And the skin themselves, they're pink, but they come in different shades of pink. you got, like, Fuchiza, Magenta... Uh, I don't know. It's quite interesting. Different shades of pink, obviously, though. I wouldn't say lavender for this one here, but, um, yeah. Uh, these guys look nice. I think one disappointing feature is that they don't have any names. You know, it would have been much better if they, were, if they had names, obviously, to be honest. But, nevertheless, these monkeys look super cool. And as mischievous as they sound, they are, in fact, really are, in fact, a horde of bananas. Well, a horde of banana lovers, actually. Well, sorry for the fact that this vlog has gone a bit rough and ready because I had to deal with some hoovering later on in this video and the trains uh, seem quite much better days there. I think the trains lost its gusto now because I must have been running its battery for quite a long time now. So, anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And once again, sorry for taking so much time for me to produce this vlog here because obviously I had to deal with a whole bunch of hoovering in my room because the, the computer room and where I'm sitting here is pretty much dirty as it is, but now it's all clean because of the hoover and for the fact that I have to change the battery of my tour train and whatnot and stuff. And um, yeah, I think it's working now. Oh, anyways, I'm just going to turn it off now because I want to speak much nicely here without the train. Like so. So, anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give this video a like, subscribe for more Flip Flap toy reviews in the future. And without me just having my face being exposed all the time, you're gonna say next, don't you guys? Thanks for watching and bye for now.